try again. Good evening, everybody. Um, I've got to read out the emergency evacuation procedure and a bit of housekeeping. Um, in the event of a fire, the alarms will sound continuously. Please leave the council chamber through the main doors, turn left and walk down the staircase. Please exit via the Queen's Road entrance and proceed to the assembly point outside NatWest Bank. Have a look road and wait for the instructions. <coughs> Toilets, these are situated on this floor to the left of the lift and on the ground floor to the left hand side of the corridor near the information centre. And uh, please would all speakers bring uh, the microphones a bit closer to them please uh, because we have people here, uh, we have an induction loop for people with hearing difficulties. Thank you. Right, uh, apologies for absence. Councillors Batsford, Davies, Wesley and Charlesworth and Councillor Waite is going to be a little late. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, minutes of the council meetings held on the 16th of May. Can we agree with those, please? And the 21st of June. Thank you. Uh, um, declarations of, inter of interest. May I ask members to declare any interest in matters on the agenda? Members are reminded of advice that, is, that if they declare an interest to the Cabinet, they need only to say that their interest is the same as that recorded in the minutes of Cabinet and state the date of the relevant Cabinet meeting. Also, to avoid unnecessary declarations, we will leave declarations of interest on Cabinet minutes until they are called in the call over and the particular minute is reached. Councillor Daniel. Thank you, Mr Mayor. In uh, motion at item 7, uh, just declare a member of the Sussex Police Authority. I'm also a uh, declared candidate for the Sussex uh, Police and Crime Commissioner post in due course. I regard that as a personal interest and reserve the right to speak and vote. Thank you, Councillor Daniel. Councillor Street. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I need to declare a prejudicial interest in item six as a director of the Hastings and Rother Credit Union. I'll leave the chamber for that item. Thank you, Councillor Street. Councillor Finch. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would declare the same interest I had at Cabinet in, re in respect of uh, item, uh, item 17. Thank you, Councillor Finch. Councillor Cartwright. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, in respect of item 6, I have a prejudicial interest because my partner is the director of the Hastings and Rother Credit Union. I will leave the chamber for that item. Thank you, Councillor Cartwright. Councillor Rogers. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to declare a personal interest in item 11B, minute 9, the sport uh, strategy, in that I'm employed by English Table Tennis Association. Thank you, Councillor Rogers. Councillor Pagnell. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'd like to declare, I think it's uh, prejudicial in item 17, the non-domestic rate relief as a, as a committee member of uh, the Southwater Area Community Centre. And can I apologise? I was not paying attention when you did the minutes. Can I take this opportunity to thank members for your very kind gesture at annual council part two in marking the passing of my father? I was very grateful. <coughs> my mother was very touched. Thank you, Councillor Pagnall. Councillor Hodges. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, a similar prejudicial interest on minute number 17 on um, non-domestic rate relief. I am a director or a trustee of two organisations that are involved. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Hodges. Uh, any other declaration of interest, Councillor Cartwright? Yes, um, I was leaving this until um, item 17, which I thought was what you wanted. But I also have a prejudicial interest under item 17 as a, a director of one of the organisations, the Southwater Area Community Centre, which is uh, receiving non-domestic rate relief. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Cartwright. Any other declarations? No. Um, <clears throat> no, uh, we move on then to, uh, and I lost my agenda now, it's all blown away. We move on to uh, questions. We have, no, we have not received any uh, questions from members of the public, um, so, uh, or uh, written questions from, mem uh, from councillors. So uh, I'll take oral questions from members um, to the leader, deputy leader, or lead members. Sorry, Councillor, you're right. There, I, I, there wasn't any, so uh, I did miss that one out. So I, I do apologise. So we move on to questions. Right, uh, Councillor Beeson. 
Councillor Clark, Councillor Cook, Councillor Pagnell, Councillor Rogers, Councillor Wilson, Councillor Martin, and Councillor Turner, and Councillor Finch. Okay. I've got them all, I think. Councillor Sebastian. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, a question for Councillor Chowney. Uh, step up the work of the Grotbuster team. That was in our programme for the year. It's on page C10 of the Council book. Uh, would you agree, Councillor Chowney, that the Grotbuster enforced major improvement to the Lindhurst surgery um, in my ward of Braybrook? Uh, that's on the Park Gates roundabout. Uh, and, of course, there's a very high profile uh, place for anybody, for any visitors coming by road to our town. Um, would you agree that that's, um, uh, that's a, a very good example of uh, the valuable work that uh, the uh, Grotbusters team carries out? And could you tell us uh, a little bit about the ongoing work of uh, the Grotbuster team? Uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, Grotbus is still going from strength to strength. Uh, well over 500, I think around about 550 uh, enforcements have now taken place and properties improved. Um, uh, Councillor Birch and I and all councillors did our annual Grotbuster <coughs> Seafront Walk recently, where we go along the seafront and look at all those properties, well, firstly, that uh, have been improved through Grotbusters, but also checking up on those that still need to be improved. And there are a few cases, three in particular on the seafront, uh, where uh, it action so far has not managed to, um, uh, to bring about a result. And in those cases, certainly we'll be now taking uh, works in default action or possibly even considering compulsory purchase. So um, there's no escaping from Grotbusters and recalcitrant landlords and property owners need to be aware of that. But it's not just the, the um, seafront, as, as Councillor Sabishan pointed out, we're taking action elsewhere in the town as well, in particular around the town centre, um, but also um, uh, around in other parts of the town too, as, as Councillor Sebastian mentioned. And uh, he might also like to know that one prominent uh, property in his ward, the Langham Pub, which has been empty for a long time, is a very poor condition, uh, which I did, I believe, actually get planning permission earlier this year. Um, nothing's happening there, so we'll be taking enforcement action, action against that as well. I think that's already proceeded. So, uh, and indeed, if members have kind of you know, particular properties in their wards that they think we need to take action against, do let me know, uh, because certainly uh, the programme, as I say, goes from strength to strength, and we intend to deal with all properties in the town that are in a poor and unsatisfactory condition and make sure they're brought up to standard. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chowney. Councillor, I do apologise. No problem, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, question for Councillor Scott. Uh, he may remember some time ago that we, more or less, well, we had cross-party agreement for a motion for plastic bags and working with local businesses to reduce the use. I was wondering what progress had been made on working with local businesses to reduce their usage. Okay, I do remember, uh, Councillor Cook, and all I will say is that um, officers, council officers are continuing to work with local retailers where appropriate and try and drive down that, uh, that, that waste, shall we say in terms of plastic bags, etc. The reality is, is that um, we don't control or regulate what they do. We simply put in that response and ask them if they will um, get involved and be part of that. Some have, some have agreed, um, but most in terms of the, the larger supermarkets have not. Thank you. Um, Councillor Clark. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the question for Councillor Chowney, um, given all the excitement we've all seen over the last few weeks. Um, could you possibly tell us about the success and the economic benefits of the summer programme of big events in the town, please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, it has been a pretty busy summer in spite of the weather in Hastings with um, events that we, and of course regular events that take place in Hastings. We've always had kind of quite a programme of events anyway, but with the extra um, funding that from the Arts Council that we had and the state open space being created, we obviously had a lot more this summer. Um, we had the usual things like Jack in the Green, but we also had the Stay Saturdays events. We started off with Fisherman's Friends on a wet evening back in uh, March, I think it was, uh, at the time of the opening of the Jerwood Gallery. 
Uh, we had Hoffice Schechter, which had, I think, a couple of thousand people there. Pilo, which had the capacity 3,000 crowd there to see that. And lots of other events in between as well. Um, considering the weather, we've had, as I say, many thousands of people come along to those events and to see those. And, of course, we've had Torch Day as well, um, including St. Leonard's Festival. About 50,000 people came to that. And, most recently, Pirate Day, um, which had a similar number. And, indeed, anecdotally, um, some businesses in towns, um, particularly pubs and licensed premises, were saying that Pirate Day was their busiest day of the year. So, um, that's evidently having an effect. And in terms of all those events, I'd, particularly, I'd like to particularly thank officers um, who worked on this and the people who have worked on this, Kevin Borman in particular, all the work he's put in, Michael Hambridge in organising the state Saturdays, and of course not forgetting Roger Crouch as well, who worked for us specifically over the um, organising the Olympic torch event, but also independently put on Pirate Day as well, which was a magnificent success. Uh, and I'm sure all those who were there recognise that. Uh, 14,231 pirates, a new world record um, and around 50,000 people in the town. Of course, there'll be more to come. Um, there will be uh, the rest of the state Saturdays events. Um, obviously, there'll be bonfire later in the year. And we're also, for the first time, having a herring fair this year, and that's going right into November. And that's a new event that will be funded out of the flag funding, the £1 million flag funding. So lots going on. Anecdotally, I mean, it's clearly having a positive impact on businesses in the town and particularly those, obviously, that are kind of tourism, leisure related. What we want to do, though, is to get together a kind of panel of businesses where we can kind of benchmark this and kind of look at what the actual impact of different events and different kinds of events is during the course of the year. At the moment, as I say, it's, it's evident there's lots more people coming here. Anecdotally, businesses are saying it's good for them, but I think we need to be able to judge that more objectively, and I'm intending to do that, to get together a sort of panel of... Uh, volunteer businesses across sectors to judge what the impact of these events is specifically on the uh, economic regeneration of the town. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pragnall. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, this is aimed, I think, at Councillor Birch, but I'll be told uh, if it's wrong. It's for the lead member responsible for electoral services. It's Councillor Kramer, thank you. Following the publication of the Electoral Commission's Performance Standards Report into Electoral Services, can the lead member please tell me why this council fell short of the required standard in producing ballot papers, poll cards and notices, and also tell me what steps are being taken to put this, put right this failure in the democratic process? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I'm going to start off by saying I was um, very satisfied with the performance, and in fact, uh, the performance of, the, of, uh, of our democratic services has been through the scrutiny process, and there have been very positive comments back. Now, uh, I have to apologise, Mr. Mayor, because if this is information that's come out in the last week, no, I'm not aware of it. I'm quite, I'm quite happy to take it away and come back to uh, Councillor Pragnall or to other members. But certainly, um, I, I know under the um, uh, watchful eye of um, the head of corporate services, if there's any lessons to be learned, we will be looking at those. But I do, I do take issue with the fact that we fell short. In fact, I'm very, um, very satisfied with the performance. So I need to look at that and come back and happy to um, send a note round to uh, members. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kramer. Hang on, please. Please. Thank you. Councillor Rogers. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this is a question for Councillor Birch. I wonder if you could please update us on the latest position regarding St Mary in the Castle. Yes, uh, cer certainly. Um, we will be bringing a report to the Cabinet in September to outline the way forward for that building. We are still in discussion with those who've put in an expression of interest to clarify both the cultural offer that they are developing and, of course, the financial viability and security and stability of their, of their scheme. Very interesting ideas coming forward, but I think it'll take us a little longer than we anticipated to get to a point where we can confirm all that. But certainly in September, a report will come to the Borough Council Cabinet outlining exactly what we're going to do. Thank you, Councillor Birch. <coughs> Sorry, Councillor Wilson. Thank you. Um, I think this is really, yes, it is for Councillor Birch. Uh, so w will the Leader of the Council uh, give an update on the future plans for the Britannia Enterprise Centre uh, 
and how any plans will affect the current tenants. The Council has no plans for a Britannia Enterprise Centre. It has no plans for developing it, changing it, transforming it or anything else. There are no plans whatsoever. Uh, so uh, I can assure you that the Britannia Enterprise Centre, which we value as a workspace for small businesses, particularly art, artisans and craftspeople, will remain in that position. Hmm. Thank you, Councillor Birch. <coughs> Councillor Martin. Actually, my question has already been answered by Councillor Chowney. It was regarding the Pirates' Day and thanking everybody that was involved. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor uh, Martin. Councillor Turner. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. <coughs> my question is to uh, Councillor Chowney. Uh, I wonder, Councillor Chowney, if you could tell me what progress has been made on the play area in uh, the Ore Valley development. I've had several inquiries from residents. Um, over a number of weeks now, they felt that the play area uh, should have been completed by now and the school holidays are here. Can you give us a progress report on that, please? And uh, also, as to what has taken so long for it to, to why it's not been um, implemented yet. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, um, yes, you're quite right that there was a planning condition um, that uh, should already have been fulfilled uh, for that play area to be completed in the uh, first phase of the um, uh, what was the Millennium Communities development, um, the Ore Valley development. Um, I'm told though now that um, the developers uh, are intending to do this. They, the reason it's partly because of the weather and partly because of um, works on the electricity substation nearby that sort of made it dangerous to work on that site. Um, but they are hoping to get the uh, works completed where they are intending, and I'll try and make sure that they do, to get the works completed within the next six to eight weeks. I appreciate that that's not really in time for the school summer holidays, and I'll try and put pressure on to get it done quickly, um, because I don't think there's a great deal more, you know, the actual installation of the equipment, which is the fencing apparently went up today or yesterday. Uh, the installation of the equipment shouldn't take that long, so I would hope they could get it longer to do that, but I'll chase it up and try and make sure that at least some of the school summer holidays they have a playground to play in there. Thank you. Councillor Finch. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to ask Councillor Birch, will you join me in condemning any union activity which could disrupt or is designed to disrupt the Olympic and Paralympic Games, for which the people of Hastings have shown considerable support and is, after all, a showpiece for, Hastings, uh, for our country? Thank you. I'm always happy to answer any question in relation to my responsibilities as leader of Hastings Borough Council. I think this falls outside it. Thank you, Councillor Birch. Um, that's the end of the questions then. We move on to motions now. And um, a motion has been proposed by Councillor Wincott as set out in the Council book. I call upon Councillor Wincott to speak in support of the motion. I will then open the matter for debate. Thank you, Mr Mayor. On the day that we learn that the UK recession is deepening, the people of this town need protection. Protection from legal loan sharks, officially known as payday loan companies. You'll have seen shop windows like the money shop here in Queen's Road with eye-catching promises of instant money and in the small print, eye-watering levels of interest and incredibly high charges. Companies clearly making a profit from the misery of others and helping create a cycle of poverty. If you have a poor credit history and need money quickly, this is exactly the place you would go. I've spoken to residents in Orr and in Baird who do just that. The consumer organisation Which found that two in three people who take out payday loans are using the money for household bills or buying other essentials like food, nappies and petrol. These are not greedy people taking risks and ignoring the small print, many people become trapped in debt. They service the interest of their debts rather than reducing them. Do you remember when we used to look at credit cards with interest rates of 20 or 30% and be shocked? These payday loan companies are charging between 200 and 16,000% interest over a year. 
There is a problem with these companies. 93% of the public believe that too. But it seems very little action has been taken. Capping charges is the right thing to do, and most European countries do just that. The government has told us that local people should have more power to influence what appears in their neighbourhood. Now, by creating a new planning class where we can decide if a new loan shop would negatively impact its residents, we would have that power. Introducing this new class would be the right thing to do. Some might say that if you regulate, restrict or prevent payday loan shops from appearing in Hastings and St. Leonard's, then people will be pushed towards illegal loan sharks, but that's not necessarily so. That is why I want the government to strongly promote the use of local credit unions, like Hastings and Rother Credit Union, a local financial cooperative owned and run by local people and offering good rates of interest. But of course, most people have no idea what a credit union is. So saying promote them is a bit vague unless real steps and a real commitment is taken. I believe that central government should set aside national and local funding for marketing materials, television, print, radio advertising, because how on earth will credit unions ever be known about and used if they cannot take on the wonga.coms and the money shops at their own game? I know this type of glossy advertising is expensive, but the good it can do for the public, for our residents, is immense. Additionally, I would like to see uh, our own council investigate whether it can promote credit unions on its own marketing and publicity material. Because if we all truly believe that people need to use these credit unions, we must all play our part. Governments of all colours over the past few years have allowed payday loan companies to operate with little or no regulation, to charge whatever interest they like. I don't believe we should be hands off. This type of exploitation of the residents of our town needs to be stopped now. Both our parties, nationally, have spoken against high rates of interest in payday loan companies, and they both say they back credit unions. Now it's time to make it more than just words. Let's ask the government to cap the charges, give us the power to prevent the spread of these shops, and actively promote credit unions to the full. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wincott. Uh, have we a seconder? I'd like to second it, uh, Mr Mayor, but I'll reserve my right till the end. Thank you, Councillor Hodges. Councillor Webb. Firstly, I'd like to start by declaring an interest as an East Sussex County Councillor. The reason I start with that it was because at East Sussex County Council several years ago, I um, actually did give financial support to, to credit unions. They actually um, gave, uh, they funded them for, for maybe one or two years. They actually gave all, uh, all their staff got, got letters um, telling people about the credit union. So it's quite clear that a body that is not, that is not known for its socialism or uh, et cetera, quite clearly saw there was a need to support, support credit unions. I've also got the privilege, maybe 10 or so years ago, to be the portfolio holder who spoke in this chamber in support of credit union, where we actually did have a community development worker at that time who, who did a lot of the work in, in actually supporting the credit union. So there is a tradition in this authority in supporting anti-poverty strategies uh, that came out of the, the awareness due to the, end, due to the um, economic indices in 1998 when we became aware, all councils live on the council then, could actually tell you that there were 11 deprived wards out of 16. And in the Sussex County Council, they could tell you uh, where they were in the ec when the deprivation um, tables. So to me, uh, and, and this is a no-brainer, I would, I would be amazed if any councillor could, in all conscience, um, vote against it. I'd be very interested to hear, uh, to hear what's said, but this, to actually vote against this would be um, you know, a retrograde step. And also, it would go against any, um, any fairness, because I think we all try to base our lives on fairness. And as I, t as I said at the beginning, the County Council actually supported it several years ago with credit unions and anti-poverty strategy and I think we should do the same. 
<coughs> Thank you, Councillor Webb. Councillor Finch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'll please Councillor Webb straight away by saying we agree with this uh, uh, completely. Um, certainly, I think free competition is, is a fair thing, and we're in a business world, but this and many things that have been said by Councillor Wincock are so true. It's preying on vulnerable people, and frankly, many of them are of low education, perhaps low intelligence, and don't really understand exactly what they're letting themselves in for. Now, I had a resident recently who, in fact, had got themselves into a mess with one of the local, and it finished up with pressure from the um, companies that come chasing the money that he was committed to paying 60% of his weekly income back until it was brought to my attention. And needless to say, it's, it doesn't happen now. It's not happening. But these are the sort of people that they don't know really where to go. And I mean, as councillors, I don't think many of us perhaps uh, realise that there are a lot of these people about, particularly in some of the poorer wards, and we could be offering perhaps more help than we do. I certainly like the idea of credit union. It was something that uh, has been talked about for some, to, to, to promote it and keep it going. Um, I'd even say, like to see something introduced where people have to repay money, be it their council tax or be, be it whatever, can do it perhaps by direct deduction from their income. If they're on benefits, it can be directly deducted. And I know that this is possible, because I've been funny enough talking about this today on another issue. But I think this type of thing, where people find it very difficult to manage their money, we could, as a council, perhaps be of more help than we are. Certainly, we would support this motion. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Finch. Councillor Pecknell. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, Councillor Finch has taken one of the phrases out of my mouth, or off my piece of paper, about these people preying on the vulnerable. Um, there's a biblical term uh, for people like this, or organisations like this, it's usury. And it's a word that's fallen out of use and perhaps should come back in. Um, I'm not sure which company it was, I have a suspicion it was Wonga.com. I saw an advert recently for them, 1,737% APR. One hears of others that are 4,000% APR. This truly is preying on the vulnerable, and Councillor Wincock, I agree with just about every word you said. There are three parts of this. I'm quite I'm unhappy with all three of them. Um, I quite like the idea of the new planning use. Um, it fits in, as you say, with localism and us being able to make decisions based on our local circumstances. With the credit unions, absolutely. I mean, he's left the room because of his prejudicial interest, but of course, Councillor Street, as everyone knows, is very... Uh, strongly involved with the Hastings and Rother Credit Union and all power to him for that. I'm playing my teeny tiny part in actually promoting it by putting them in touch with the people who run the office I work in with a view to putting up a stand or a display for a few days or a week so they can talk to the staff where I work about it. Even though it's probably not the people who've got a job where I work who might be most in need of a credit union. But then it takes people to be saving for others to borrow. So. Um, Absolutely agree both with all three sections of this, and I shall be voting for the motion. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Packnell. Councillor Gurney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, obviously, we wholeheartedly support this motion, without doubt. These sort of um, companies prey on the weak. They're absolutely abhorrent, and we should do everything we can to ensure that they are closed down and they have no place in this town. Um, some of the rates will trap people in a web of debt for years and years and years without any possibility of paying off these debts. You have, Peter, um, Councillor Finch has um, stated that obviously he's dealt with a case where somebody who's illiterate doesn't have the understanding to actually be able to see what they're signing. I mean, this is totally and utterly flawed, and we should do everything we can as a council, as a national government, um, to ensure that these do not happen again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Gurney. Councillor Clark. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's, it's always very warm and welcome, isn't it, when all sides of this illustrious chamber will agree on something for a change. Consensus politics at its best. Um, I commend Councillor Wincott and Councillor Hodges for bringing this motion to, uh, to, to this council. Um, I think there's two issues here that we're looking at. One is payday loans on the high street and one is credit unions, which are two distinct issues, but one can potentially fill the void um, missed by the other. I think the important point, and I would say to you, Councillor Finch and other people, is that if you have clients 
or residents who are, um, believe they've been missold a policy, there is redress concerns by complaining to the business and then taking it through the financial ombudsman. If, if they believe you've got a literate client there, how would they have been able to necessarily um, fulfil the obligations of statutory declaration and disclosure and so forth? So there would be legal redress. I think credit unions certainly have a part, part to play um, in the ability of providing easy credit um, for members of the public. But let's, let's remember fundamentally um, we want to be in a society where the most vulnerable in society aren't having a need for easy credit. We see continual strains on household income so forth and the pressures that many families are facing now. So let's not see we can abdicate by saying that credit unions better for provide nice, cheesy, easy access um, to credit for families. There's got to be a meaningful um, solution of protection within the welfare system for them. But as we all know what's going to happen in the welfare system, we may actually see a larger take up in the amount of families and the individuals that do need to go to these payday loan sharks. So it, it pushes an even er greater urgency to see uh, a fresh injection of capital into credit unions. I think we could take it a step further. We have lots of wealthy affluent members of of society living in our town, we should be actually encouraging those type of individuals to deposit funds with the credit union, which they will receive a, a, a form or a notional form of return which can be passed on. We have lots of charities that operate here where they'll be prepared to hold some forms of deposit. So I welcome any step forward where we can um, reduce the burden that many families are, are facing at this current time. But what I would say to all members are, let's, let, as we all ultimately agree on this, which is fantastic, let, let's look where we do have cases where residents are being you know, financially abused in the way that Councillor Finch so eloquently described a few moments. Let's look that we can collectively have some action on this. Let's have the Hastings Action Group to take these people away from our town to make sure, not, not the residents, I'm talking about the payday loans, because we've got another one just opened up in the road in Queen's Road. You know, where's it going to stop next? Let's use the planning powers that maybe we potentially have to make sure that we take these people away and channel individuals into organisations like the credit union. So, you know, well done, Councillor Wincott. Well done, Councillor Street out the back there as a long-term advocate and Councillor Cartwright at the credit union. So, well done, guys, and brilliant. And uh, let's have this over done nice and quickly. Show our hands and we can all agree and move on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Uh, Councillor Scott. <coughs> Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm pleased too to see that we've got cross-party support for this because it is a, well, uh, a very well thought through motion from Councillor Wincott. Um, it's clear that, uh, that there are a number of issues in there. I'm very, very pleased to see that uh, we, we've got a, a, an A, B and C which will go forward to the government and, and we'll be looking at that locally, hopefully, um, if, if the motion is passed um, about creating new planning use. And I think that's, that's a really um, excellent idea as well. So I very much welcome this. Um, I remember some years ago, several years ago, in fact, um, a 75-year-old grandmother telling me that year on year she would borrow 500 quid or thereabouts just to buy Christmas presents for her, kid, her grandchildren uh, and then spend the next year paying all, all of that money back. And that's a heartbreaking story. Whether they're of low intelligence, and I don't agree with that, I think people are just vulnerable in certain cases and they're actually desperate, very, very desperate because they can't get the money from anywhere else, they need to go to these loan sharks, and then they're spending, they're spending the rest of the year paying it back. So it's more about desperation sometimes. You know, 500 quid might not be a great deal of money to some people, but to others, it's, it's, a, it's an absolute fortune. So I very much welcome this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scott. Uh, we move back then to Councillor Hodges. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I would like to just dwell on the the drivers and the root causes that, 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 loan, that has propagated the loan shark industry. I think it's important because I, for one, always believe that prevention is far better than cure. And those, those drivers lie in deprivation and punitive reductions to up to a great extent in the current benefit system. Um, I think it's important that we understand that, that there has to be a driver, there has to be an action for every reaction, and this is a reaction to poverty and deprivation and the most vulnerable who are the ones who are suffering. Anyhow, very much like the Holy Roman Empire, the description universal credit is somewhat misleading. It isn't what it says on the tin. It is neither universal, nor do all the benefits uh, are included, nor is it a credit. It actually provides money rather than a right to money to its recipients. 
Many of the people who receive this benefit at times are the people who are we describe as vulnerable. These are the people who will struggle to manage their financial commitments. Yet, when this system comes in, there's certain things that are going to even drive people who perhaps managed up to now to avoid the loan sharks, even drive them towards them, because it's the intent of this system to divide payment a month in arrears, which is, you know, and if there's more month, if there's, if there's more in the month than there is money in the month, then guess where these poor people are going to go to? Quite simply, it's going to drive them further and further towards loan sharks. It's also targeted at receiving between 80% and 80% of all claims online. It is a digital default system that is being introduced. Let's not forget that. And if you compare that to the parallel world uh, of the best digital take-up for job seekers allowance, it's somewhere around about 22%. So you can imagine the people who are going to struggle now to even get onto the system. Um, the government listed a whole raft of what I think are fairly spurious incentives that this new initiative will create, including one to work in, in jobs that don't exist, I would add. And the only incentives that I believe it will create, together with the draconian changes in the housing benefit system, are the creation of financial migrants within the UK, there will be an increasing acquisitive crime, a loss of jobs within local government because the administration of this system will lie with the Department of Works and Pensions, not the local authority, and most important of all, a propagation of the loan shark industry. And this makes it even more important that, that, that my colleague, Councillor Wincott's resolution regarding the control of loan shops and the support for credit unions hits Westminster as a counterbalance to their abandonment of the most vulnerable in society. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hodges. Councillor Wincott, should you come back? I think I've said enough. Let's go to the vote. Okay, then. All those in favour of the motion, please show. That's unanimous. Not worth calling all those against, I should think. Okay, then, we move on to another motion. Um, oh, yes, can we have the councillors back in, please? Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'll just wait until they... Oh. Okay, then, we move on to um, item seven on the agenda, which is uh, another motion. A motion has been proposed by Councillor Cook as set out in the council book. I call upon Councillor Cook to speak in support of the motion, and then we'll open the matter for debate. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, in Hastings, we have a long record of dealing well with enviro crime, such as dog dirt and graffiti, and other such crimes as well. What this motion aims to do is to continue that tradition, but to add something new to the way we, we do that, to, to add a new option that we may, may be able to use. Community resolutions are not a punishment. They are designed, uh, though the way that they're designed is for the intending officer would decide in a way that an offender can best redeem themselves without facing court proceedings. Although this would lead to some loss of the fixed penalty notice money, it would also perhaps allow a longer term solution to the problem when dealing with offenders who show contrition for what they have done. Indeed, in Hastings, we have already dealt, uh, we are already on an ad hoc basis benefited from this service. Um, the first was when a couple of drunk lads damaged a sign that showed, uh, and then showed a lot of remorse for that. Um, they agreed to write a letter of apology to the council and pay £90 each in costs. Both would likely otherwise have faced a caution from the police, which would have stayed on their record and may have had consequences for their job prospects. The second was two youths spraying offensive graffiti in the Pelham car park place. They were sat down with the wardens and their parents and told how much this type of thing cost the council. They then spent the Saturday picking up litter with the street wardens the following week. On each of these occasions, the lesson learnt by the perpetrators, by their own testimony, was better than a straight caution or a fixed penalty notice or their day in court. Dealing with it in this way may well have a far better outcome for the council, as I've already said, than just taking them to court or a straight fixed penalty notice. Now, having seen the exchange of emails over the last few days, I hope this is something that we can all agree on. It is an innovative way of dealing with a big problem, and to my knowledge, we would be the first council in the country to do it, to use it on a formal basis. And I believe it is a far better way of dealing with these problems long term. I move this motion as set out in the papers. <coughs> thank you, Councillor Cook. Do you have a second? Councillor Pagnall. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor, and I reserve the right. OK, we have any other speakers? Councillor Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. And uh, can we start with saying that uh, we on our side are in support, basically, of the um, thrust of the motion. I think I would have worded it slightly differently, personally. I might uh, criticise some of that, but uh, we're not bicker too much about that. Um, 
I think you have to remember it's a disposal mechanism community resolution for people who have committed offences. I think, and as well, to some extent, you have to perhaps discriminate between things like dog fouling, which you get a fixed penalty notice, and criminal damage, which is basically a police matter. Yeah. Um, and I think this issue is quite complex. And uh, if you're actually saying, and I don't think you are, let's get rid of all fixed penalties for dog fouling, I don't think I'd be with you here. You have to look at very exceptional circumstances, I think, where you'd actually use that. Certainly in terms of uh, criminal damage, I mean, the the benefit of the system is it avoids giving people criminal records. So its yes. offence is really best used, I think, for things that would go to court. One of the particular areas which I particularly appreciate is children in care. Often children in care get upset, lose their temper, smash bits of china, glass window, they get taken to court. Or they get a caution, they get a criminal record. And it criminalises those kind of uh, young people. So the, the aspects of community resolution does work well, but it probably works best with those kind of criminal sanctions. And in some ways, I think it would perhaps be quite good if perhaps the movement second did it actually call for a seminar, you know, where the police could actually come and explain how this works. And it does work on uh, different levels. You know, there are things like post-conviction community resolution. We're not dealing with that here, but it's quite a complicated uh, field. Um, I'm not convinced, I have to say, that it would deal swiftly with local crime. It's not swift. And I perhaps ask the movement centre, perhaps look at those words. It might help to deal, um, but you know, you've actually got, you've, you've got to, first of all, you've got to train your staff in community resolution, you've got to sit down with people, you've got to then get them to do things. Things are not that quick. And you have to identify the perpetrator. So it doesn't, you know, if you don't know who did the criminal damage or the dog or anything else, it doesn't solve any of those issues whatsoever. You have to know the perpetrator. So to be honest, I don't think it deals swiftly. Um, I think that's probably over, uh, overdoing it a bit. Similarly, in terms of reducing the cost of prosecuting, well, uh, you know, again, it's true perhaps in the generality, not necessarily for the council, because if it's criminal damage, it's actually be the CPS that would prosecute. It isn't the council that pays. But said, that, that said, um, we don't want to give uh, solicitors too much money in defending cases in court. Uh, do we counsel Gurney? Because that would not be appropriate. Um, so, again, so that's a, a little bit complicated as well. And there are obviously costs in terms of time of staff who are trying to sit down with various people, discuss the options, you know, go through the restitution and, and so forth. That's not to say it's a bad idea, but this is not a method of saving money, I don't think. I don't think it's going to do that for you. And when it's going to contribute to the cleanliness of the street scene in Hastings, I have to say I think that's pretty marginal. I think the community resolution can be transformational for the individual. You can use it, you can turn on individuals, but to assume that somehow by adopting this, all the streets in Hastings will suddenly magically become clean and tidy, there won't be any dog mess out there. Um, my mother would say was, it's over-egging the pudding a bit, with respect. So, you know, I, I, I resist the temptation to amend it for you, but I do wonder whether by, you know, perhaps having a seminar on the issue, perhaps modifying some of the language, uh, but while being supportive might be, uh, uh, you know, a better way forward. Um, certainly since the scheme came in, uh, community resolution scheme, it's dealt with some 6,000 crimes in the whole of Sussex. That's led to lots of uh, short as your work in courts, which we welcome, short as your work for criminal solicitors, which we welcome. And uh, I th I'm sure it would be something that we can actually build on, but can we not kind of overdo it, uh, Councillor Cook, and actually imagine this is going to transform the town. But yes, you're right. It may help with one or two individuals. They may see uh, the, the powers. It is important that people are trained to do this, can I add, really. It's not, you know, this is not for amateurs. That People do need training. The police who are involved in community resolution are trained to do so. And, uh, and that's the kind of scheme that should happen as well for us. So general support, but I could have improved the words for you. Thank you, Councillor Daniel. Um, no other speakers, so we go back then to Owls, so can go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, I know uh, Councillor Daniels has an election to win, but he's actually incorrect. Um, a number of other police forces have been using us in a much wiser scheme than Sussex. It has a great advantage to the town. This isn't going to solve the whole problem of dog foul and fly tipping, but it's part of a package that we already have. It gives the police much more discretion when dealing with a matter, and it does obviously reduce prosecution costs. We all know, and Councillor Daniels will know, be aware of this, the majority of fines that are actually paid by perpetrators that go before the magistrate's court, there's some £2 billion owing. 
um, enforcement action is rarely taken to recover those and um, those sums of money. So if why waste the money when you can get the offence dealt with at an early stage? Yes, there will need to be training, and there will also be a bit of time to get used to and adjust to having a different way of dealing with something. But it's just a different way and a different arm of attack you will have against low-level offences and offending in this town. People, it will be. It, there is a deterrent part of it. Obviously, if people see that someone has to put back what they have done to the town, and they've affected, obviously, the taxpayer of this town by incurring additional cost, then we should do it. I can't see any reason why we wouldn't. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Kearney. Councillor Sebastian. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, I basically ag agree with this uh, motion, but uh, I also agree with Councillor Daniel that uh, the term deal swiftly is really rather an unfortunate uh, turn of phrase. Um, it won't be swift, as, as Councillor Daniel uh, pointed out, and also it'll sort of unreasonably raise public expectations about what um, this kind of scheme can achieve. Um, I think that this kind of restorative justice uh, needs to run alongside traditional uh, uh, what's called um, uh, retribute let's get this word right, retributive justice, um, something which the, traditionally the party opposite has been uh, very fond of, that's to say using the stick um, uh, to uh, um, achieve results. I think you need to, you, well, I say, they have to, they have to, to run uh, together, and, and, and this cannot be a, a substitute for uh, the on-the-spot fines um, and, if necessary, uh, um, uh, prosecutions. Um, however, I think it could contribute towards educating uh, the public about um, you know, what it is to be uh, a good citizen and, um, uh, and sort of changing uh, um, the culture because in the end that's what you have to do. Countries which have very low rates of um, environmental crime, littering, dog fouling, graffiti and, uh, and all the rest, um, those are countries in, in which um, there is a different uh, popular culture, as I, I'm sure that uh, everybody here who's, who's been to such um, countries has uh, been able to see for themselves. Um, so, yes, uh, I, I certainly will be voting for this, but um, it would be helpful, actually, if um, uh, the movers of, of the motion thought a little bit about the precise wording of it, because, as, as I say, and as Councillor Daniel said, um, it does fall down slightly in, in, in that respect. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Beecham. Uh, Councillor Clark. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I also, you know, you know, consensus politics night in Hastings this evening, isn't it? Everybody is big loving. Um, I just have a couple, a couple of issues with this, really. I, I've got nothing, nothing wrong with regards to what we're seeking to achieve, but. I think as Councillor Daniel raised, reduce the cost of prosecuting such low-level crime. Well, obviously, that, will that necessarily be a benefit back to Hastings Borough Council? You know, has this been costed? Or is this another big society-style um, pledge from the party on the other side, which is full of rhetoric but lacking in substance? So that's all I would particularly like to see is, actually, what are the costs? What's it going to contribute? Where's the you know, cost-benefit analysis? And are, will, will all the benefits be delivered for another agency? Well, actually, we won't see any benefit on our P&L or any benefit within the outputs that we see within the wider Hastings. And as I said earlier, you know, believe that it's, it's, the right, it's the right place to be going. Completely support it, along with all my comrades on this side, I believe. Um, but has it been costed? What are the, who, who's going to benefit from the cost? As Councillor Gurney quite rightly said, there's £2 billion worth of... Um, unpaid um, fines in, in the system. I don't know what that equates to in man hours, but the question I would ask in many respects is, we haven't collected the fines, are people going to turn up to do their community resolution? You know, who's going to police it? Who's going to monitor it? How's it going to come along? Are we going to say that Hastings Borough Council, working in Sussex Police, are going to have community resolution projects where we're going to come and clean Mildred's garden for her, but actually what happens is on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, nobody turns up. So just from my perspective, as a mere lay person, no legal background or legal profession, don't have the benefit of the bench or a, a legal profession, where's the costings? How, how's this going to be managed? How's it going to be implemented? And can we all acknowledge that really, you know, once again, big society projects with very little substance but lots of rhetoric on the top. So 
But well done for bringing the motion to us, councillors Cook and Pragnell. Thank you. Thank you, councillor Clark. We now move back to councillor Pragnell. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think, whilst in general, I'm delighted by the, um, the support that we're getting, and uh, I think Councillor Sebastian misunderstands this. No one actually, when I was listening or reading this, has suggested that we take away retributive uh, punishment and just go for restorative justice. As uh, my colleagues have said, this is part of the package. Uh, Councillor Daniel actually used the word, I think, which I think is right. He said it's redemption for those who are the perpetrators amongst other things. If he didn't say that, well, close enough. <laughs> and Councillor Cook in his opening comment particularly commented on the fact, and it mat should matter these days, is that having a criminal record affects your job prospects. And if you've done something stupid, that's criminal, yes, but stupid and a one-off, and the police or whoever who attend it decide that uh, community resolution is the one for you and you can go along and say I'm sorry and paint other <coughs> graffiti or effects such like. The whole point, or the, there's two points here. One is that it saves people, or several points, saves people from criminal records when perhaps they might not have them. It will help and contribute towards the community. And if the council, Councillor Clark was talking about, if the council isn't concerned with the community in general, but only in the bottom line of the council, wider, please. We're looking wider here. Um, okay, it may only contribute uh, to the street scene in a small way, but a small way is a good start. We've got other things going on at the same time. This is just contributory. So even though there's been a bit of nitpicking, um, I'm pleased that uh, members have uh, agree with the policy, with the... Um, with the, yes, the thrust of it, and such like, and we'll be voting in favour. I thank you all. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Pagnell. Councillor Cook, have a right reply. Just two very quick points. I mean, first of all, on dog fouling, although a fixed penalty notice doesn't add to a criminal record, I would say that if somebody really is showing quite a lot of remorse at the fact that they haven't gone out of the bag, actually saying to them, OK, well, we have this scheme and we can use this scheme, what's wrong with that? Um, the second point I would make is that if they don't turn up for the community resolution, they then are charged and taken to court, Councillor Clark. Okay, I mean, uh, thank you very much, Councillor Cook. We move to the vote. Then all those in favour of the motion, please show. Again, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. We move on now to uh, item eight, and uh, I refer members to the report of the monitoring officer on special responsibility allowance. Chair of Charity Committee. This report has been circulated to members and is available for members of the public. We move to debate now. Councillor Birch. Yes, uh, uh, Mr Mayor, I'd like to move that we accept the report of our independent panel. You have an independent remuneration panel to look at members' allowances and, uh, in general, our policy through over the years of, of whatever the political majority on the Council has been to accept the report of our independent panel because that's why you have them. You ask them to look into your allowances independently of councillors and if you ask them to do it then in general you accept, it, you accept their report. All they are suggesting here, which is the only, only matter up for discussion in this debate at all, is does the work commitment of the chair of the charity committee entitle it to the same level of allowance as other cabinet portfolio holders as opposed to the shorter and smaller allowance currently on offer. If the panel believe it does, then I move that we accept their report. Thank you, Councillor Bush. you have a seconder? Councillor Scott, thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Pagnell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I start by saying that I do not object or oppose the independent remuneration panel's uh, recommendation? Um, it quite clearly is a job that requires a lot of work. Um, now that the, uh, the trust is, well, we are the trustee, or however you want to put it legally, the chairman of the committee clearly has a lot of responsibility and a lot of work. So I do not oppose the principle, or indeed the fact, of um, the increase of £3,000, bring it up to £6,003. Um, I'm aware that uh, the first £3,003 is already in this year's budget, uh, members' allowances, um, it occurs to me that this council recharges the Foreshore Trust for the cost of running its car parks, and we recharge Councillor, I, th I think what we're, we're talking about here, as Councillor Birch rightly said, is just the allowance. Yes, I'm talking about the allowance. 
um, specifically, but uh, I'm giving you some background. I will come to it quickly. We recharge them for emptying their bins and such like. So um, my amendment, which I shall move shortly, merely adds um, the fact that we recharge the additional amount for this year only to the foreshore trust rather than to the taxpayer of Hastings. Now, I know that blurring and such like, but my amendment, I apologize for not having a pre-printed one, is quite simple because I didn't know the exact wording of the original motion, is that at the end of the recommendation which Councillor Birch has moved is the additional sum to be recharged to the foreshore trust. Yeah, Councillor Pagnell, I think we're actually here we're discussing the principle of the allowance and not really a member, uh, um, an amendment at this stage that is the principle we're talking about. So um, I think uh, you know, it's not at this time. Um, any other person, anybody else wants to speak? Councillor Finch. Your Order, can I get on a point of information, really, Mr Mayor, when will this be discussed then, the idea of the principle of the payment? Just been advised, Councillor Pinch, there's no such thing as a point of information. Okay, all right. <laughs> no, I don't think so at this moment in time, but uh, I'm sure you can take it up with the legal officers afterwards. Um, right, then, uh, there's no other speakers, and um, is that agreed in that we accept this? I go to a vote? All those against? You want to go to the, you want to vote? Yes, okay. All those in favour, please, please show. Right. Hang on. This is a principle we're, talk, we're talking about. Okay, so that's unanimous. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, right, so uh, it is. Abstention. Yeah, well, abstention. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, then. Uh, we move on, then, um, to the Audit Committee report. Um, I refer members to the report of the Chief Auditor on Audit Committee 2011-2012 report to the Council. This report has been circulated to members and is available for members of the public. Is that agreed? Okay, thank you very much. And we move on then to item 10 now, which is membership of committees. Are there any changes to membership of committees? No, thank you very much. Then we move on to the call over. So, I will post now to take the call over in relation to reports of committees. We start with Cabinet, 11th of June 2012, uh, minute number five, petition, Mini Rail Lincoln, West St. Annis to Hastings. Uh, minute number six, compulsory purchase of land to enable the development of the next stage of the Priory Quarter development. I, I minute number seven, corporate plan 2012, thank you, thank you, Councillor Cook. Minute number eight, Hastings local plan, local development scheme. Minute number nine, sport and physical activity strategy. Minute number 10, cabinet appointments to committees, working groups and partnerships. Minute 12, land at Churchill Drive. Cabinet, 9th of June. That's confidential, that's part two. I missed 11, did I? Oh, sorry, 11, Charity Committee. Okay. Um, we go into Cabinet, 9th of July. Um, minute number 15, management response to overview and scrutiny review on influencing and appraising the decisions of third parties. Councillor Cartwright, thank you very much. Minute number 16, external funding update. Minute number 17, non-domestic rate relief, charities, community, amateur sports clubs, and other organisations. Minute number 18, final accounts 2011-2012. And minute 19, annual treasury management report. Under Rule 13.3, items which have not been reserved are not to be discussed. I move that the Council adopts the reports and minutes of committees, excluding the reserved items. Is that agreed? Thank you. Before proceeding, I would like to remind everyone that the first speaker on delegated items is the member who reserved the item or their nominees. And when there are no speakers on the item, the lead member will be asked to wind up the discussion. So I move on to minute number five, uh, minute, sorry, number seven, which is a corporate plan. 
and Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, it's uh, actually just a quick one. I think Councillor Cramer may have an idea of what it's going to be over. Uh, it was something I actually missed in the corporate plan when we first discussed it, which was that the target around complaints was, was taken out of our, of our corporate plan. Now, whilst I can appreciate having a target for the overall amount of complaints that the council receives is perhaps not particularly useful, um, I certainly know in the industry I work in that we are, and it's something that you, you actually choose to buy, we, we, are, we do have to provide the, the number of uh, successful complaints to resolve, and I'm sure Councillor Clark, as a, a banker, is, has a similar situation within his system. Um, what I was thinking, what I was wondering is if there will be some sort of target, some sort of way that the public can see how we are dealing with complaints, how well we deal with those complaints, uh, something that shows, you know, the amount of complaints received, perhaps the amount of complaints that are actually actively resolved. I think that would be useful, and that was the only point I, I wanted to make on this. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Any other speakers? No? Then we go back to Councillor Kramer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, perhaps, obviously, this is a very um, important issue and lots of detail in it, but um, uh, in terms of the... So I'll just sum up and, to, and answer the point Councillor Cook's made. Um, although I would like to say that uh, to, for members to remember the uh, importance of this issue in terms of the number of um, uh, meetings that have had that the overview and scrutiny committees have um, scrutinised this and debated their particular areas, the st uh, council staff and management forum, um, which we received the information from them, and um, uh, other um, consultation that's taken place, and that it is very important and I agree with Councillor Cook that we do need to be held accountable and for the public as well to hold us accountable um, through our corporate plan. Um, in terms of complaints, uh, all I can say at this stage, and I'm just desperately trying to remember if we had this discussion at Cabinet, I don't think we did. Um, it was afterwards, but the head of corporate services, I can, um, uh, I hope, reassure Councillor Cook has taken this issue away to look at carefully and how we as a council firstly deal with complaints and secondly monitor complaints and look at how, you know, and right through um, in terms of a very serious complaint that could end up with the Ombudsman and obviously we, uh, I'm pleased to say, don't have many of those. So um, it was, I, I believe, in terms of the corporate plan and to, the decision to take that out was that it really was without that kind of structure as how we deal with them, uh, fairly meaningless information um, for, uh, to monitor. So what I'd like to suggest is that once, while that piece of work is taking place, um, I will discuss that with the head of corporate services and then inform councillors um, how, how the system is going to work. So there is a, a means of finding out what complaints there are. But I think at the moment, it really, of my experience of having that in the corporate plan is that really overview and scrutiny committees haven't engaged in monitoring that because we haven't had a clear system. I also think it's very important for councillors to know if, if uh, our communities and our residents are complaining about services, how we can actually direct them. But mainly we want to resolve complaints at the earliest level. And I think we all know that we do have, and I, uh, there's no press here tonight, so I'll say that we have serial complainers to the council, unfortunately, that take up a huge amount of officer time. And um, I think really I want, what I want as a lead member on this issue is a good system, an effective system. If people genuinely have a complaint, they should be able to complain to the council and have, a, have it properly researched and an answer given. And so I think if I could come back to councillors through you, Mr. Mayor, um, and say once that system's in place, how it's going to work and how it's going to be monitored, hopefully I can reassure Councillor Cook. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kramer. <clears throat> okay, we move on now to minute number 15, which is a management response to overview and scrutiny review on influencing and appraising the decisions of third parties. There we go, Councillor Cartwright. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, disruptive timing of roadworks, poor standard of road maintenance, we've all suffered from these things. I would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank Carl Taylor, who is the Assistant Director of Operations at East Sussex County Council, 
for his most uh, helpful work um, when he acted as uh, one of the main witnesses uh, on this scrutiny review. He revealed, as uh, part of the review, that 75% of reinstatements of road surfaces after roadworks, uh, which have been conducted by utilities and their contractors, failed to meet minimum standards. He expressed frustra frustration that because the law only enabled them to do, levy a fine of up to £150, it was extremely difficult in practice to compel these contractors and utilities to ensure that works were done in a satisfactory manner. Now the government has been drawing up guidelines for those organisations which work on the highways, uh, but it is very weak guidance. Only the street works industry representatives are sitting on the body which is drawing up the guidance. The public and businesses have no say. Neither do elected representatives, although of course ultimately it will be for a government minister to approve the guidance. So my view is that the government needs to act to give the county council the power and authority it needs to bring the right <coughs> pavements under control. Now there are a number of things which we can do at the borough council which will help the matter. But uh, I don't pretend for a moment that any of these is a, a magic wand. We propose the following recommendations. The development of an internal process by which members of this council can refer highways inquiries to a nominated officer. The compilation of a list of streets around the borough of special significance to civic pride, tourism and the aesthetic quality of the town where prompt like for like replacements following highways works are essential. Officers to write to the Secretary of State for Transport expressing concerns regarding the proposals for good practice and suggesting some additions. In particular, we want to see representatives of businesses and elected representatives and various other public bodies contributing towards the guidance. And finally, the formulation of a voluntary code of conduct to increase communication between the county's highways department and the borough council. Now, I've taken the trouble to, to thank Mr. Taylor for his work so far, and uh, I, for one, will be looking very closely at progress with the review, and uh, I hope that uh, we can have the support of all members. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carbide. No other speakers? Let me move to count. Oh, sorry, Councillor Pagnall. Thank you, Mr Mayor. It's just a very brief one. I mean, I had a pleasure <coughs> of, of, of sitting on this uh, scrutiny review. Perhaps I ought to declare a personal interest as a member of East Sussex County Council. Um, it's just uh, the little bit here about uh, the good practice guide, which Councillor Cartwright uh, referred to. And in the report, it, uh, it stated that time that officers would be writing to the Secretary of State for transport expressing concerns. There was a fairly tight time scale, I understand, so I don't know if anyone would be able to update us as to whether they did write. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I suppose here I ought to uh, declare uh, a personal interest in that in my employment, former employment, I was uh, at one stage the um, coordinator for the National Joint Utilities Group, which was uh, responsible for writing uh, in conjunction with all of the highway authorities and the utilities uh, an acceptable standard where one didn't exist under the previous Public Utilities Street Works Act. And this formed part of the legislation that we have. And one of the most difficult things we get uh, is, and Councillor Cartwright referred to, Carl Taylor's 75% uh, of core samples fail to meet the reinstatement requirements. What Carl Taylor didn't tell us was how many of those failed 
because they the, the did not meet the actual dimensions exactly. It is a, as written, it's a very black and white situation for, a fail, for a meeting the standard or not meeting the standard. So if the reinstater, in his wisdom, decides to put a little bit, a couple of extra millimetres of black top in and uh, two inch, three inches instead of two inches of uh, concrete at the in the sub-base, that, that is a much stronger reinstatement, but it is equally a failure to meet the requirements. And uh, what would have been uh, of a greater interest, I think, would have been how many of these reinstatements actually failed to meet the durability test. And that we didn't get to the bottom of. So it looks good, it sounds good, 75% failed. And I don't disagree with uh, some of the sentiment with regard to the contractors not doing the job properly. And uh, there, I'm, personally, I feel that the county council's own contractor doesn't meet the standard properly. You've only got to look at the seafront and the number of back visits that we've had for massive uh, potholes where the, reinstate, where the blacktop that was put down in a massive thickness has failed and has been pulled out due to bad weather or uh, whatever. It could be a combination of uh, poor materials. That we know we haven't got to the bottom of. But it, it is a glaring error, I feel. And what I would say to everybody is that at the end of the, the group's meetings, all of the members actually understood the problem that we have, have in this town a lot more than they did at the beginning of it. And it's not a simple black and white world, as I found out when I got thrown in at the deep end as the coordinator for the joint utilities group. So, you know, it is something that there isn't a black and white answer to it all of the time, but I think if there was a greater enforcement of the regulations by the county officers on their own contractors, and in turn upon the contractors uh, that the utilities employ, because you can't visit every job. No engineer can visit every job that is issued out. He has to take a, a, quite a big value of that work on trust that it is done properly. Otherwise, you know, there aren't enough hours in the day and the consumers, God bless them, have not got bottomless pockets in order to pay for the amount of supervision that you would be required to do. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor Webb. <clears throat> I thought that this sort of issue would be of great interest. I uh, declare an interest to the County Council. My first committee, subcommittee in the County Council, uh, on was highways, and I had the privilege to be involved um, looking into the interests of my residents and Bohemia Road, where there was a lot of uh, concerns and disruption that Council Cartwright and myself were at meetings with uh, three or four years ago with the late uh, Councillor uh, Tucker. And the thing that to me is lacking in this is it possibly um, positive involvement by, by the members. I know on both of the authorities I have the privilege to serve, the members to be, to be involved in groups with, with a lesser importance to residents, like the residents of uh, in Bohemia, and, and, and then this issue. So in some ways, the, the people who are involved in this issue are well-meaning and very good middle-ranking officers, but I personally would like to see when, when there are problems, I would like to see lead members and, and directors involved in this issue, and then I think we would see more resolution of these issues. Thank you, Councillor Webb. Uh, Councillor Hodges. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I must declare a personal interest. I was a member of the... Um, overview and scrutiny review team as well. Um, this, I, I, I listen to, to Councillor Wilson and, 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 and I agree with much of what he says. That it isn't a black and white problem and by any means. It, it is a difficult problem and eventually from out of these deliberations and the work that will ensue, there will evolve, I guess, a process that will make life better for everybody. It can only go that way. It couldn't get much worse at the moment. 
Um, I think there's some simple things that, that, that would help tremendously. I mean, there is always this apparent arrogance by the utility companies and a complete ignorance of the needs of other people, whether they're businesses and traders who need to earn money and not have their businesses interrupted, and residents who merely want to park their car near their home. There's a whole lack of understanding by many of these subcontractors who, who, who represent the utility companies. Also what's needed, which is very easy, is an application of common sense that seems to be missing from many of these works that, that happen, where we find all of a sudden that, that works will take place on parallel routes, one route being the alternative to the other, and then you find that they're both dug up. It doesn't help, it doesn't display any, any sense of intelligence or, 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 or ideas that other people have to live and get to work and travel around. Just little things like that would help tremendously. But I think, you know, in, 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 in support of East Sussex County Council and, and Carl, Carl Taylor, the introduction of the highway steward has, has definitely helped the situation, at least got a person there now who looks at things like reinstatements and shoddy workmanship and looks at small problems that probably wouldn't get drawn to the attention of somebody in a senior position there. So I believe that um, what we need to do is now to take up the recommendations of the, of, the, of, the, of the scrutiny review team and make sure that they're implemented at the earliest possible stage so that we have something to build on to try to improve the life and the lot of the people and the traders of Hastings. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hodges. Councillor Kramer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a quick point, really. Firstly, I, I, as the lead member with responsibility for scrutiny services, I wanted to say that I think this is a, a really good example of scrutiny in this council and the fact that it's, um, it is about making a difference and the importance of recognising the role of East Sussex County Council and highways, particularly, as we all know, I'm sure, they're major issues that we all um, get asked about. So I thought when it came to Cabinet, um, it's very, very... Uh, good example of how scrutiny can work and I know overview and scrutiny is renowned for thanking everybody so I thought I'd come in and say uh, that we must remember that each review that the council does is um, uh, is an addition to the officers who lead those reviews I I know that the members of the review the chair and the members should be thanked for their bringing this to our attention and and certainly uh, bringing recommendations, which, after all, to follow that point, is, should be reviewed. Uh, you know, good practice is that a, a report comes back after six months, so there is a, a review inbuilt into what happens to the recommendations. But I would also like to personally thank Verna Connolly, who led this review, because I think it's it's quite it's quite a difficult, well, a very difficult subject when it's not actually. <laughs> Um, scrutinising our own service as Hastings Borough Council. It is actually looking at a third party, if you like, and did agree as a review group to narrow that down. I thought personally it was disappointing that the other, apart from Southern Water, the other utility companies didn't engage in the process, and I think that is um, it, yeah, not surprising but unfortunate, and I think every effort was made to try and engage them, and they didn't, didn't want to, and that says a lot. So at least Southern Water did. Um, and also the, the fact that there's a dialogue now on highways issues and a structure within it. But I would like to thank Verna. I'm sure the members of the team would agree with me that with a very um, busy personnel and organisational development department, she led this uh, review very effectively through to a conclusion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <coughs> thank you, Councillor Kramer. Uh, Councillor Turner. Uh, thank you. <coughs> No, Mr. Mayor, I must also declare an interest sitting on the um, that um, uh, review uh, committee. I think it was I actually who first who asked the question of um, Carl Taylor of, um, about quality control, about uh, when potholes and the roads being done. Um, who was doing the quality control and how often the, the contractors were complied with standards. And I was absolutely astonished when he said 75%. But I also have to say, there's an issue of quality control. Who's going to be doing it? They haven't got the officers to get round. And I have to say, um, yes, we have made progress, and it's good to have these discussions with the county and let them know our views. But I don't think they've got the officers to get round there, to be perfectly honest with you. I haven't seen the standard improve very much at all. Um, you see um, materials and submaterials put in. I've yet to see them um, use a, a whacker plate to lock everything down. And I can tell you within no time it's sunk again. And I'm afraid that for all the um, assurances, reassurances we've been given, I've yet to see that materialise. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Turner. No other speakers in Councillor Scott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, roads, digging up the roads to utilities, an element of arrogance, I guess, with the utilities because they have the God given right to come in, excavate the roads after giving notice, and, and um, that's, that's where we're at in terms of statutory undertakings. They, they're able to do that. Um, the reality is, is this scrutiny um, review has highlighted some of the issues that I think all of us have had concerns about over a period of time, and that is how we, how we can better work with the utilities, who can better work with local traders, business and residents and so on and so forth to try and minimise those impacts. Um, and and um, I, I welcome very much the report, I welcome very much the contribution that the scrutiny team um, have, have, um, have uh, given to us um, by way of this report and recommendations. Uh, and I commend it to, to the Chamber. The reality is, is, is that in terms of highway stewards and the County Council responsible, uh, responsibility for highways functions, um, they're inundated as highway stewards with, with uh, an element of work um, and, and they get round the best they can. Um, we, we're always going to say that's maybe not good enough because we need to make sure that the roads are reinstated to a, a standard um, of correctness um, and, and, and that um, we're, we're comfortable with that. Um, let's see how things progress. I think the report certainly has highlighted a number of areas um, and um, I'm sure Hastings Borough Council and East Sussex County Council will continue to work together to try and address some of those problems. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Scott. Um, as there are no part two items to be discussed, I declare this meeting closed at 7.22. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.